Molly Scott Cato, the Greens have been highly critical of aggressive tax planning and ag aggressive uh, tax deals that big corporations as well as individuals have been doing. But you voted for Mr. Juncker on this motion. Why? We didn't vote for Mr. Juncker. We voted against the censure motion yeah. because we thought that wasn't constructive. We think that actually what's happened with the LuxLeaks scandal is we've got a tremendous momentum now to actually make some progress on the kind of advances we want to see so that corporations can't shop around and they do have to pay their taxes properly so that governments have enough to invest in public services. But he was the man that presided over all these deals, these letters of comfort that were given. He wasn't just to, to the companies that were comfort that if you come and base yourself here, you'll basically pay no tax. He wasn't just the Prime Minister, he was the Finance Minister. For a lot of the time. And, and can I point out that in doing these deals, he deprived other European governments of billions and billions of tax revenues. I absolutely agree. I'm no defender of Juncker at all. And we have a message for him, which is act or go. So we've put him on notice How there. How long will you give him? But, well, we're, we're thinking about six months initially, and we're also calling mm. for a parliamentary inquiry. So I'd like you to ask Julie, yeah. perhaps, whether she's going to support that. Indeed. It's, uh, well, you, you've done my job for me, <laughs> which is unusual, and I'm grateful. <laughs> Julie Girling, what's the answer? Because you um, abstained on the vote. Yes, I abstained. Uh, my group abstained because we don't believe that this is constructive, the same Molly. That doesn't mean to say that we, we support Juncker. As you know, we voted against Mr. Juncker way back a few months ago. However, he is there. There is, so there, is an, well, there is an inquiry on, on, this, on the state aid side of this going on. It's already been put into place. Sure, but I, hold, okay, hold, okay, I just point out, that's an inquiry by the European Commission. Yes. Um, remind me who the head of the European Commission is? Yes, Mr. Juncker. Right, investigating what he did when he was Prime Minister of Luxembourg. There How's may, that going to work? There may be questions to ask about that. Well, I think there see. are. What's well, the answer? So what My, about the parliamentary inquiry? Well, can I answer, please? <laughs> yeah. You two, you two working go. together here. No, what, <laughs> we what, might be. Our, I think you are. <laughs> our view is that we should wait until we get that. He'll still be there. Nothing, nothing will change. We, we believe that you should see the evidence and then you should act on it. The How evidence will come will before be? us. As far as I know, that's not going to be very long, a matter of weeks. So, what, for the European Commission report? That's what they're is saying. That, they're going to expedite it. Is that your it. understanding? We, we, I mean, Julie says we need to look for the evidence, but we're talking about secret deals. We're actually relying on whistleblowers. We wouldn't know any of this at all if, if it, it hadn't been some. Can I, say, can I say, if it hadn't been for some investigative journalism? Some investigative mm -hmm. journalism, yes. Your trade mm -hmm. is showing itself in good colours, but also, actually, people having the courage to come forward. Perhaps mm. they have grudges, but they also come forward and tell the truth. Now, we need to have protections for people who are telling about these illegal deals so that we can actually get hold of the evidence we need, because I don't think people are going to come forward to the Commission and give what, that. What well, about the European Parliament? His role in this? Should it mount a major inquiry? Possibly, but I think it's premature to do that now. I think what we've got, let's see, let's see the evidence. Let's play the... No, let's not play the man. Let's play the ball. Let's but the see man the is evidence. at the centre of, of this. He is the man. He well, is Mr Luxembourg. Moment, yes, but at the moment, what we know he did as Prime Minister and Finance Minister of Luxembourg was he made Luxembourg as a, an attractive place for companies to come. Now, that's not illegal. At the cost of everybody that's else it, in that Europe. That is not illegal. The answer to that is tax harmonisation. That means every, every one of the 20 me member what? states has to have the same tax regime. Now, the Greens would like that. We would not. That's but, not what we want to see as the end of the line. Doesn't this explain people's cynicism about Europe at the moment, that you've got the man who was running the country when all these deals were done, he's now the president of the European Commission, he's now investigating himself? Well, exactly, which is why it's absolutely important that we do have this proper inquiry, and so we believe that law has been broken, and the European... Oh, you think the law's been broken, yes, too? Yes, we think the treaty has been broken, because um, countries are required to not should, give illegal state aid, and they're required to cooperate. Should, should he not be required, or Luxembourg required, to make public these secret deals? These are secret deals. At the very least, should they not be required to make them public? I think it should be fair treatment for all member states, and if that were to be the case, then you would, are you, would you be demanding that you UK government made all of its tax arrangements with companies with major and corporations, absolutely, yes. absolutely, and and individuals. Well, we are absolutely. We public. are making progress towards that kind of transparency. Actually, we have yeah. it in the banking okay. sector now, and we're arguing that it should apply to all major corporations. We shall see. I look forward to the uh, reports on Mr. Juncker.